QuickBooks Enterprise 2021, Class Tracking, Responsibility Accounting, Add Classes. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Enterprise 2021. Here we are on the desktop. We have the QuickBooks Enterprise free 30-day trial. Last time we set up an account, a QBW file for class tracking responsibility accounting. This time we're going to be opening that up and we're going to be adding classes to it. So to do that, I'm going to double click on the program because this is the sample version of the program. The first screen will look a little bit different than it would if we had uh, the standard QuickBooks screen, but we'll open up the company file once opened, then it'll look the same as uh, as it would any other way. So here's going to be the intro screen for the 30 day sample file and we want to open an existing company file. So I'm going to say open existing company file, please. We will then locate our data file. So and if you haven't moved the data file, it'll typically take you right to the same spot where the data file will be because QuickBooks has its kind of standard place where it puts the files. But I moved mine so I wouldn't find found my company file. So we've got the class tracking responsibility accounting. Here we have it. I'm going to go ahead and close this window out. I'm going to maximize the home page. I'm going to open up the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. In prior presentations, we set up the class tracking by going to the edit dropdown on down to preferences. Then we went to accounting. We went to the company preferences and we turned on the class tracking down below. Use class tracking for transactions. We kept the prompt on. We do not have this checked off, which is to assign classes, which you can do by default either by account items or names we'll go back to that in a future presentation i'm going to be closing that out now if you're in pro quickbooks pro as opposed to quickbook enterprise which is the higher level up then you won't have this item here but you'll still be able to turn on the class tracking which will be applicable to the profit and loss or income statement however it will not be applicable in pro as opposed to uh, the enterprise in the balance sheet side of things so most of our problem will be on the income statement, so it'll be good. So I'm going to close that back out. Then, now that we have the classes set up, we want to add classes. Now when we add the classes, we want to visualize what the classes are going to be doing. If I go to Excel here, then this is what we're going to put together in a similar fashion in QuickBooks using the prop profit and loss by class. So the classes are what we want to visualize as being basically the headers to the type of report the income statement will be setting up. So for our example, we have depart a service department one, service department two, sales department one, sales department two. So we have four different items that we want to be tracking. That will include four different classes that we want to be using. So we also want to think about these different departments as cost centers. I'm thinking about them as cost centers and sales centers. In other words, I would like to break down into the granular detail, a little bit more detail in terms of what each department does so that we can set measurements and we could set projections per department and then measure them based on what they have control over hence the term responsibility accounting so i'd like to be able to break out even the cost centers which do not have any revenue related to them in detail specifically to them so that we can then uh, go in and, me and measure them and judge them based on the performance over the things that they have control over. So I want to be able to break these two out even though there's no revenue. However, I would also like to break out and see the total cost cent centers as they relate to the departments that they're helping to generate the revenue for. Because from a business standpoint, the only reason we have these service centers is to help us to generate revenue. They're doing some type of activity that's helping to generate revenue. So I'd also like to see those items in conjunction or related to the revenue center, which they're helping to support to generate uh, the revenue. So we'd like to see our information broken out in this format. The cost sent the, the headers up top being, in essence, the classes we will set up. We would also see it, like to see it basically in this format, which is breaking up just the sales centers, the items that have revenue involved in them and then see our cost centers allocated to them. So we're going to allocate our cost centers then to the, the sales centers so I can see them in relation to what needs to be done to generate, generate the revenue. And then we could break out, I'd like to be able to break out these two service centers, which are simply cost centers, and, and meaning they don't have any revenue component to them. They're a critical part of the business, but they don't have revenue component to them in detail, such as we see up here, so that we can measure them in their performance in terms of what they have control over, which of course are only costs and not over, over the revenue directly. 
So how can we do this basically in the QuickBooks system? So if we go back over here, we're going to set up our classes. So I'm going to go to the to the lists drop down class tracking and we have no classes here so far. I'm going to go to the class drop down or rise up. I'm going to say new class and then I'm just going to add these classes. I'm going to say we have the service. I'm just going to call it D1. Now this is a service department and that you could call it a cost center one. You could call it what the name of the department is, possibly something like maintenance, which which is something that only has costs. It's there in order to help generate revenue, but the maintenance department itself isn't generating revenue within the maintenance department. We could only measure the maintenance department's performance based on the costs and whether they're keeping within costs and whatnot from an accounting perspective. We can't, of course, measure them on, on their revenue generation or basically their net income if we're breaking out that particular department. So I'm going to then say, service department one and then if i say okay then we have our our items starting to populate here so i'm going to continue on we'll add service item two so i'm going to say class rise up service item two this is going to be service d2 so another another service type of item like the maintenance department which which again is not generating revenue directly within that center and then i'm going to say okay then I'm going to have the, the revenue generation centers. I'm going to say new, add another one. And this is going to be, I'm going to say this is uh, the sales D1. So I'm going to call that sales department or a revenue center that we're going to have. This is, this is an area that does have costs and revenue involved to it. But this is one of the components that are generating revenue. I'm going to say, okay, let's say we have another one, class rise up sales d2 so sales d2 i'm going to say okay now the these service items i would like to be able to break them out separately we can imagine now an income statement by class profit and loss by class which we would go to by going to the reports company and financial profit and loss by class giving us that profit and loss with four headers then allocating income and expenses to the classes that had been assigned to it but I'd also like to be able to break out these uh, service items to kind of subclasses of the sales item. And I'll do that with a journal entry going forward. We'll talk more about that later. Right now, I'd just like to show that we can use subclasses to do that as well. So if I hit the classes rise up and say new, and let's call this a service sub D1. And this is going to be a subclass now, a subclass check mark of the sales d1 and then i'm going to say okay and it'll line up basically right underneath the class that is the parent to it let's do it again i'm going to go to the class rise up new and this is going to be our service sub d2 which is going to be a subclass subclass of the sales d2 and then i'm going to say okay on that one so now what we can imagine is if I have these subcategories, when we do our profit and loss by class, it'll basically give us the, the profit and loss with the subclasses broken out in this format. But it'll also allow us to collapse the subclass into, into one line item under the parent class, which will hopefully look something more like this statement. So when I collapse the subclasses, I'll have the service departments which are non-revenue generation departments included within the revenue components so i can see them in relation to how they're being used in order to help generate revenue and then hopefully break that out to see more details so i can see the actual detail within those service departments so i can then analyze them in more granular fashion uh, as as well when we think about our responsibility accounting so we can kind of level up and level down on it now if i go to the home page then what we're imagining here is every transaction that we have, which are basically these items on the home page, we're then going to have to be allocating to the proper class. So if I was to say open up an invoice, now that we have the classes set up, we can then assign the classes here. So I can assign the class. Now we also saw that we can, we can assign automatic classing by name, by account, or by item. And that can help us to make our data input a little bit faster. We'll take a look at that in the future. But the bottom line is we need to assign every financial transaction, everything that's going to be affecting the financial statements to a particular class so that it'll break out then the detail uh, when we run the profit and loss by class and look something 
like this, where we have these classes that will be broken out. And in future presentations, we'll talk about entering that data, and then we'll be jumping back and forth to the profit and loss by class to see each, each leveling up uh, step by step as we build that financial statement as we enter our data.